This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora. Welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch, where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston, and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz. And today we leave with news, commodity prices are weak as global factory activity slows, and some banks have run out of places to invest their excess cash holdings. But first in the US, there were two factory PMIs out for June today, and this sector is back to its lowest level since May 2020. The widely watched ISM one was quite downbeat. It contracted again and by more than expected as softness continues and optimism about the second half of 2023 is sharply weakening. In this survey, new orders contracted less in June than in May, but they still contracted. In the internationally benchmark market factory PMI, the story was similar, but new orders fell on that one, although to be fair they were recorded higher in May and the decline in June is to a level that matches the ISM one. In both, price and cost pressures are easing quickly now. American petrol prices are quite stable again ahead of their holidays and summer driving season. And we should note that reinsurers raised premium costs for their cover by 50% in many cases on July the 1st, reflecting the claims cost of climate-related events. And Janet Yellen isn't on holiday. She is off to China later this week to keep up efforts to try and normalise relations between the two superpowers. In China, again less negative than the official measure, the Kaijin factory PMI for China did not contract in the way the official survey suggested. But it isn't really an expansion either. But this good news is enough to help Hong Kong and Shanghai equities maintain their rise, although the yuan remains under severe pressure. Factory PMIs in Taiwan and South Korea are contracting, although not at faster rates than previously in 2023. In Japan, they're like China, neither expanding nor contracting. India is the standout factory hub at present, recording surging demand and clearly benefiting from de-risking strategies away from China. Hong Kong retail sales were virtually unchanged in May from April, in data released overnight, but because the base was so low, they have recorded a very large year-on-year gain, especially in luxury goods. A year ago, the tourism sector was in the doldrums. The EU factory PMIs are weak, with demand and production sinking further in June. In Singapore, their largest bank, DBS, said that deposits are flowing in much faster than they can invest them, so it's had to lay off more than $36 billion to Singapore's central bank, and it is not finding enough opportunities to put the money to work, they said. They aren't the only ones worrying about future prospects for Singapore. Elsewhere, surplus liquidity is building up in Japan as well. Australian building permits rose sharply in May, driven by the volatile apartment building sector. The total number of dwellings approved rose 20.6% following a 6.8% decrease in April. By far the largest rises were in Sydney. In Australia, it's a different story with house prices turning up, according to CoreLogic Analysis. The cumulative lift of 4.1% since February comes after a 9.7% decline over the previous 10 months. The pace of annual price declines moderated to 6.8% in the year to May, from 4.8% in the year to June. The recent turn up is consistent with the new lending data. And staying in Australia, one of their largest pension funds has slashed the value of its local property assets by as much as 20% as the commercial property woes hit them as one of Australia's largest landlords. The Australian Retirement Trust, which manages $260 billion worth of assets, says its local office buildings have, been, have seen a material downward movement ranging between 5 and 20%. Later today, the RBA will review its cash rate target, which is presently at 4.1%. Markets expect a 25 basis points rise to 4.35%, given they have a strong labour market and housing distortions are featuring again. They also have inflation at 5.6%, which is well higher than they want. Higher interest rates won't help those commercial property valuations. The US Treasury 10-year yield will start today at 3.86% and up two basis points from yesterday. And the price of gold will start today at $1,921 an ounce and little change from yesterday. And oil prices are a little softer at just under $70 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent prices are tad softer too at just on $74.50 a barrel. Low oil prices are worrying producers. Saudi Arabia said it would extend a cut in oil production of 1 million barrels a day that it announced in June, at least through August, trying to push up what officials view as stubbornly weak oil prices. 
the Saudis were joined by Russia. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 61.5 US cents and only marginally firmer than this time yesterday. Against the Aussie, we're little changed at 92.1 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're similarly little changed at 56.4 Euro cents. That means our trade weighted index is now at 69.9 and fractionally firmer. And the Bitcoin price has risen from this time yesterday and now at $31,011, which is a 1.7% rise and still above $50,000 New Zealand dollars. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been modest, however, at just under plus or minus 1.3%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow.